Hi, it's me, Captain Incredible. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm here to make another episode of uh, videos that I have also made previously, but then they have disappeared, so now I have to make them again, which is really great and exciting for science. Science. What are we going to be making again today? Today we are going to be uh, making another one of these uh, and making a video about how, how it's made and what it is and what it does and why, why did I bother making it again. <laughs> As a lot of you probably know, I have made installations, uh, interactive sound installations called My Career Orchestra. <laughs> that are in different museums around about in uh, Norway and they, they look like this. And the point of those installations is uh, both to serve as, a, as an interactive art installation, but also to, to be a, a musical instrument that I and other people can uh, compose music for and perform music using. But also, they're meant to be used uh, as a creative platform to learn about programming and about uh, music and electronics and to build your own machines and program them and make, you know, expand the microbit orchestra and learn how to make music with electronics. And that kind of entails that people have to be there doing things with the orchestra Orchestra, uh, it, you know, it's supposed to be experienced by people, but as you probably know, recently having people meet each other, be in the same room, it has become a little bit taboo. So that kind of ruins it a bit for the microbit orchestra. Um, I've tried to mitigate this in a couple of different ways. Uh, one of them is by making an interactive 3D model of the installation, which you can see here. I made a video about that earlier, where you can add, you can go in and you can kind of see what it is and press buttons and things will happen, and you can kind of enjoy the the installation which is cool uh, but what I really want to do is make it a little bit more interactive so that it can be used for some of the things that it was intended for so what I wanted to do is make it so that people on the internet could come in through the internet tube and make sequences of noises rhythms and melodies and music and and send them to the microbit orchestra through the magic of intertubes and that would then be played by the installation there in the museum while I also am there playing other bits of the installation and then it should all be synchronized together and we should be playing jamming to basically jam yeah the internet internet jamming system is what I want to make uh, spoiler I did make it now I have to make it again if you're still confused about why it is that I have to make another one of these, uh, there's two reasons for that, really. Uh, one of them is that this this one here, uh, I made it for the museum to go in the installation there, so it, that it has to live in the museum. And and I want to have my own one that I can use when I'm playing concerts. So I, I want it to be portable so that I can take it with me when I'm, pl I'm playing concerts and you know control the concerts via the internet so I don't have to, to do any hard work playing the concerts. Uh, the other reason is all the footage from me building it uh, is stored on this hard disk here. Which is a hard disk that isn't feeling very well. So I have to make new footage and that's what this is. This is me in the new footage. I hope it's great. Let's get into the details about how it works. It's got wires. But this here is maybe the most interesting bit. That is an ESP8266. Here is how it's going to work, right? There's going to be a sequencer, step sequencer, on the internet. And all the people will make their little sequences there and then they'll press submit. And the sequences will be sent through the tubes to a server on the internet and that server is going to put them in a nice list and then the micro bit is going to say um i want sequence please and the 8266 is going to say oh shit i haven't got any just wait a minute and then it's going to say to the server hello can i have sequences please and the server is going to say yes and it's gonna send the sequences to the ESP8266, and then the ESP8266 is gonna send the sequences to the micro bit, and the micro bit is gonna send those steps to the orchestra. I hope that makes sense. But don't worry, if you're confused, then now might be a great time to smash the bell and, and like and subscribe and write in the comments. Help, uh, where am I? You're in the comments, mate, calm down. 
I'm going to give you a minute to absorb that knowledge, and then, and then we're going to carry on. Stop, stop, finished. Now you've finished absorbing. Hello, welcome back. And now that you've managed to take in all that information and understand it, welcome back. I've been really busy while you've been just sitting there. Uh, I've been writing lots of code. I decided to start in the beginning end, which is with the step sequencer part and the internet stuff. Uh, and I've written a lot of code, many lines. Look, it's like 539 lines of code. This is p5.js, it's on the internet. You can go there and write code, look at examples, it's really easy. It's JavaScript, basically. It's JavaScript and it helps you make cool things. But what does all this fabulous code do, Daniel? It does this. This is the sequencer, I've made it. You click here, it plays sequencers. In here, you can write who you are. I'm gonna call myself Kevin. Never use your real name on the internet. Submit, it's submitted. Brilliant. What is cold, really? Am I cold? Am I thinking? Or is it just cold? I'll link to this cold underneath the video in the description. But. I'll take out a few bits and bobs that mean that it doesn't work with my server because then it would just be a mess if everybody was like playing with code that was talking to the server it would just, it would be nonsense but you can see how everything else works basically which will be great While you weren't looking I've gone and designed the box that, uh, that he's going to go in Do you like it? The screen is going to be there here are some buttons for like, and here is the slot for the micro bit. USB hole right there. It's got everything it needs. It's just, well, we just all, all we need to do is send it to the laser. Send. What happened next uh, was that I had, had I had a great idea. I thought, wow, if I'm going to be building this thing and there's cameras about and I need to film bits of it, then why not also live stream it? So so I did. I live streamed on YouTube, me wiring up all the wires and connecting everything and uploading the code and soldering the buttons, putting buttons in it. Uh, and but I forgot to record it, so I just it's just. It was just live streamed. Um, but don't worry about that. I might as well just explain to you. I chose two white and one black buttons. And the way it's wired up is thus. The micro bit, which is on this edge connector down here, and the ESP8266, which is this little thing here, uh, they share power. Power is coming in through this USB hole here. Here are some wires going from the ESP8266 to the display. And then there's a serial cable here that goes through this switch so I can turn the serial on and off. And then the other end goes into the serial input on the micro bit. So the micro bit can talk to the ESP8266, but I can tell it to shut up if I'm going to program the ESP8266, which is handy. Oh yeah, I've connected these arcade buttons to some pins on the micro bit. is finished not bad uh just a bit of banging with a hammer and it works ish i think it works here's here's the code you can see uh, there's many lines <laughs> Eighty-three lines. If you count this last one here, which is actually just—it's just a, a comment. It doesn't really count. Um, 
I don't think it's so interesting to put all the code in the video because it gets a bit long and boring. Maybe I'll do a live stream of, of programming. Uh, if, you, if that's what you want me to do, then just write it in the comments. And... But I will stick all this code on my Patreon and I'll try to write some uh, some comments in the code to make it... Does it work though? Da does, does the code... Well, let's check. If I press that, it tries to get the next sequence. No, oh shit, it did. It found a sequence. This button here is supposed to get the previous sequence, but the server oh. doesn't support that yet. It does now. I fixed it. I added another feature that the old one doesn't have. It can play the sequences by itself. And then it'll go through the steps of the sequence. Maybe it would be great if that had some kind of way of changing the BPM. I just uh, added these lines of code so that you can push the A button and the B button to change the tempo. And uh, now you can make it go really fast or really slow. So in order to test it, I decided to just plonk a bunch of thump bit rabbits uh, on some stuff. And there they are, and then I, I turned them on. And then what did I do really? After that, the next thing I did was I took my, my old internet interface, the web interface for making sequences, and basically I just changed out all the pictures and all the sounds. So now it looks like this. And if you make a sequence, so let's see if it works. Let's just start by sending a really simple test sequence. And then we'll just call it test and submit it. Now, let's uh, try and download the next one. There we go. It has downloaded test. I reckon it works. Cat mum. Microbeer orchestra synthesizer and drum machine thingy. It blinks. It will also be joining in with the playing the music. Uh, hopefully also in sync with the other stuff. I decided to synchronize it using my mother brain as the sequencer and to send out the synchronization radio messages. So the next thing to do is to test this with real humans on the internet or do a live stream. Check this out, I'm live streaming. Oh yeah, and look down at the bottom left, you can see a little queue that is turquoise and there all the people on the live stream can see what is the next sequence that is gonna be played on the robots and, and who is being played right now. And I can make beats and, and chords and everything and it can all synchronize together, uh, which means it all works, which is brilliant. Great test. Brilliant. We've been going for about an hour now. And that's it. That's the last one. Okay, thank you. Bye! I made a bunch of recordings of the rabbits when they were banging on lots of stuff. Uh, some of it was like rhythms that were made by people on the internet and others stuff was just things I, rhythms I made with them. And they are going to be available as a sample pack uh, for, for my lovely patrons on, on Patreon thing. And that's the story of how I made the Microbeer Orchestra internet jamming thingy machine box set up in, in stuff. And how you, the people of the internet, helped me to test it with making music. In conclusion, I'm a little bit confused about all, because I did what happened. 
I made made something. I reckon I'm gonna be using this kind of platform technology thing for loads of other weird shit in the future. Definitely gonna be using it when I play concerts, but also I wanna like expand on it even more in it. I wanna make it so you can make really long sequences, download each other's sequences, control not only micro bit orchestra things, make music on the internet. Why not? I've got this like weird plan about how to use this to control a drawing robot that I've made. Using this technology, uh, anything's possible. Yeah, that's the conclusion. Thanks. Bye.